no, let him try. Let him try and go really close to, to zapping him. Go zap him. Zap him. dealing with her because the end, other end of this chair sits at her knee height and when she tried to kick me a few times she bang her leg on the edge of the chair which is what I wanted rather than my face or my arm or something so it's just habit I'm gonna keep doing it for a little bit and then eventually once this is all super easy routine we'll just turn our chair and go back to the way we used to do it but I am one very very happy milkmaid right now uh, there is nothing better than months of effort and conquering issues. Um, for me, whether it be anything farm steady or anything else in my life, um, I'm really stubborn. My mum will attest to that. We used to butt heads constantly because she's stubborn as well. And um, yeah, persistence pays off. That's all I want to say is like, especially with animals. Um, and it's really hard for me, like I did, I'm going to be honest, I did lose my cool a few times and swear at her and get really, really mad. But most of the time, um, I just stayed calm, I spoke to her calmly. I, you have to, it's about your energy. So you was tried to be as calm as I could around her. And some days when I just wasn't feeling it, my beautiful husband would come out here and he gets really bad hay fever, guys. I'll let you in on that secret. He would come out here and patiently, because he's more patient than I am for sure, um, toil away with this cow. And yeah, we both at different times said, nah, put her in the freezer. She's just painful. But to be really honest with you, um, she is a beautiful cow. She's just got some trauma and it was worth working through it with her. So that's awesome. Um, okay, so a couple of other things. Uh, the, the chickens that we were hatching, uh, we're on day 24 now, um, and we've got ducks, uh, guinea fowl, and um, some turkey eggs in there for a friend. And yeah, day 24 is when we would sort of we call it for chickens. I don't think any more are going to hatch. So um, they were either infertile or they're passed during um, incubation. So we're going to clear that the chickens out, get everything ready to, to do the ducks, guinea fowl and the turkeys. Fingers crossed we get some turkeys for my lovely friend. The same friend who gave us bucket to use with our ladies. Um, she's one of our New York friends, so that's awesome. Um, and 
Yeah, so we're getting ready for that. I've never incubated ducks successfully, so this is a first for me. Um, another thing is the, the pigs. With any luck, we'll go up there today and everyone will still be there and they'll be happy. We'll take them up and feed and get them used to that routine where we bring them in and feed them and touch them and, and handle them as much as possible. Then we'll walk the fence line again, make sure that there's still nothing breaching that fence line because anywhere where green touches it, it will short out. Um, and yeah, eventually we hope to have the whole property electric fence with solar. I don't want to use power. Another little update. We've had a very good investigate on how the cows got out. Um, I don't know whether you saw that, that video where the cows is go missing. Uh, we've done a little bit of investigating and it appears that someone tampered with our gates. Harvey did not break it. Um, someone definitely opened our gates and made it look like he did. There were boot prints, two different size boots. Um, I don't know whether, it could be a number of things. It could be someone doing the dodgy but all in all I think probably not that um, because we've moved here and everyone we've met has been so lovely um, we've really enjoyed getting to know them and they're all very genuine farmy people so I would probably not suspect that uh, this is a hot spot like I said for tourists coming to see canola and we do have we have had other things happen on this road from those kinds of people so I'm actually, I'm airing towards the fact that some activist or something has decided to let them out. Um, I do want to touch on that. Farming my whole life. I grew up, um, prior to this, my grandparents were on a farm in Ravensop and that's where I started growing up when I was little. That's way down in the southwest. Um, then I did some schooling in, in Perth, specifically Gosnells. Um, and by the first year of high school, we were back on the farm. Um, so my parents decided that the city was no place for our kids to grow up. It was just too too violent and too, too much going on and, and that sort of thing. So they moved out to a little tiny locality just outside of Northern. Um, and I went to school in Northern and, you know, grew up doing all kinds of farm things with local farmers and stuff. My first jobs were like, mulesing and all that sort of stuff um, and I I have seen all the different sides of farming so um, I know that the activism is huge and you know there have been some things that are questionable that have happened um, I I don't like seeing animals on boats with no water or crammed in like that's awful and as a farmer it's appalling but just so you know the farmer has no idea about that. That farmer has raised that animal with love and, and you know, pumped their money and their time and their and their effort into that animal. Um, I don't think I know a farmer that doesn't take orphan lambs and bottle feed them and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to give you the tip. That's hard work, um, especially when they're brand new. You're feeding them every four hours. That's huge. And usually, you know, farmers' kids are doing it and all that. See? Um, you know, activism, it's great and all, but sometimes it's very misguided. You know, if you grow up in the city and you never ever experience or live on the land, you, I'm, I don't blame you for thinking like that, like at all, because you just see these horrible images of cattle or sheep or whatever packed into little tiny ships and all the other horrible things you see. Um, and, I, and I love my animals, like hand on heart. You know, but we eat meat, don't get me wrong. We love them and treat them with love and kindness and pump all the nutrition and, and um, care into them. And, you know, we're about to put up scratching posts for our cows. We don't have to. They can scratch on a tree, but we, we know that they really love it. So we're just going to put some effort and time into providing for them exactly what they need and also give them some comfort and, um, you know, something fun to do. And, we just wouldn't do that if we didn't absolutely adore our animals. Um, so yeah, and I, I don't think I've ever met a farmer in all the time I've been working on farms around that I thought didn't love his animals or care for his animals. And that's the truth. Um, the reason we do mulesing or dock their tails or crutch them or shear them even um, is for the best 
interest of that animal. Um, if you don't use them, they get fly blown and literally blow flies lay their maggots in that animal and it eats them from the outside in. It just eventually eats the animal. So they're the things you don't see um, because farmers have done the right thing. I oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Lost, um, but if you let someone's animal out, where are they getting that care? You know, um, plus, <laughs> highly illegal. Um, if you're ever caught doing something like that, you will do jail time. Um, the, the legal system will make sure of it. And so will the farmer. Um, because they genuinely care about their animal. And you've done something dangerous to their animal. So, um, basically why I'm saying this is I really love anyone who doesn't understand farming or thinks it's a terrible thing or, you know, thinks we're cruel to animals or anything like that, please find one. Do some work on their farm. Help them look after their animals. Um, help them do some shearing, uh, mulesing, any of the things that, you know, it, go and work on a cattle farm in a dairy and you'll very quickly see that those farmers love their animals. And you know, or message me. Um, I do plan on turning this property into a farm stay, cuddly animal farms, that sort of thing, because I really think that kids need to learn where their food comes from, learn about keeping animals and empathy and uh, love and kindness towards another living creature. Um, it's something that's sadly, you know, starting to go by the wayside as our lives all change and we we end up all just in cities and never seeing it. So I am setting up to welcome people onto the property to come and see our animals, see how it's done, see how we care for them. Um, but yeah, I employ you. If you are actually feeling like that, reach out to someone and see if you can do some work. You know, it is really a labor of love. And I can say from Definitely from my point of view, everyone I know who keeps animals loves them, adores them, does the best thing for them. So, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. I hate to think there are people out there thinking, you know, the wrong thing or, yeah, basically, that's it. Valley didn't come in. Did you guys notice? I might go and see where she is. I want to make sure I keep an eye on her every day. Because we are getting close to her having a baby. So I went into my local Nutrien yesterday. People in there are so lovely. Um, and I grabbed myself some Ketol. It's on order. I didn't actually get to pick it up because they didn't keep it in stock. Uh, that's basically a medicine to help in case Valley goes into ketosis. Now, I'm told by my cow experts that it's not common for a first timer to get ketosis or um, what's the other one called? Anyway, it comes to me. Um, but I'd like to just have it on hand just in case I'm, I'm a planner. I don't want to have, oh God, it's happening. I don't have anything. I'm not prepared. That's not me. Um, and I also got some Minbao, which is basically to stop um, ketosis and that sort of thing. If she needs it, like I won't give it to her if she doesn't need it. But if something happens and she goes down and I can't get her to hop up, that's what we'll do. We'll give her some of that because I'd love to be able to just call a vet out. We struggle up this way in the wee belt to get a vet. So on it, um, I do lots of research on YouTube and different various um, tutorials and things to try and educate me myself the best I can to how, how to care for these animals should something go wrong. Uh, we don't anticipate anything going wrong and we've been working very closely with our AI tech who, who's been doing cows for many, many years. Um, yeah, I keep her updated. Even yesterday I was messaging her and saying, this is what where we're up, what do you think? And um, yeah, they're on call. Should I need a hand to pull a calf or anything like that? Because um, I've never done a cow. Uh, I would like 
someone to be here. Um, I'm sure you've heard me say in previous videos that she's actually too young to be having a car. Um, if it was, if I was in in charge of that whole scenario, she wouldn't not be having a car at this age. She'd probably just be going to the bull now. Um, but, and that's why we've kept Clementine right away from any bulls, um, because she's still too young. But yeah, when they, when they assess her and say, yep, she's ready to go, we'll, we'll put her with the bull and, um, we don't know who yet. I'm thinking we might ask Hunt and Gather if we can use their JT, because he's A2A2 and she's A1A1 and I'm hoping at best I'll get an A1A2 calf. Um, that would be awesome because from there that calf can then have an A2A2. Luck, like if luck is on my side. Uh, but yeah, if, if not, I'm not all that bothered by the A2 and A1 um, genetics to be really honest with you because I've tasted the milk from everyone except Clementine. I haven't had A1A1. But it's all good to me. I don't really taste a difference. I believe there's more protein in A2A2. And I know that the there is a enzyme in A2A2 that helps it be, be more bioavailable to most people's gut types. So yeah, if you struggle with gut issues, A2A2 is what you want to do. Pretty happy now, eh? Hey? All right, I'm going to go call Valley and see if she'll come in. Come on, sweetie. All right, guys, we've had some something horrible happen. Come on, darling. You gotta come in. That's it, come on, darling. Come on. Um, I'm sure you guys can see, she's tiny. She's got no tummy at all. There's blood on her back end. Uh, so, Yes, I, I need you to get the bag that's inside the shed and this. Go put it in the bag and bring it back. We need to inspect what happened. No, could I see? No. All right. Yeah. All right, I need this lamb out, Grace. There's lots of ants on it. Yeah, I know, because she had it overnight, oh, obviously. Sweetheart, what happened to you? Drink the molasses, darling. All right, I'm going to back off and leave her for a bit. No, you took it. Off me. She's lost the calf. Where's the dress? What's the date today? So she... Sunday, 16th of October. 16th of October. Um, she's not looking good. I don't know if it's just the shock of labour, but she's panting, her mouth is open, there's a bit of foam coming out. I've given her a bucket of molasses water and a feed, and we're going to keep her in here. She's got fresh water. Um, she doesn't look good. I'm going to go inside and call my cow expert. I sent him out looking for Valley because she didn't come in for her breakfast. Now, I've been watching her every day, morning and afternoon. Her pin bone ligaments haven't gone or anything. So, I don't know how this has happened. She's obviously slipped it. Is this big enough? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. So, I'm going to show you something distressing right now. If you don't want to see it, look away. But this is very real, this farm. So... That's what Noah has found this morning when he was looking for Valley. Plus he's found her foaming, not looking good at all. Clementine came. Yeah, I know. She knows. Good girl, Valley. Have a big drink, darling. I'm going to have a look around. You can see her udder has come in. Are we going to milk her? You poor darling. Bucket down there has got molasses water, which helps the sugars help with shock. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, she did burp. She's she's distressed. Um, Hopefully they come today, eh? Hey? We knew there was a possibility something could go wrong because just as I was talking about not minutes ago, um, she's much too young to be having a calf. Um, which is why we have been watching her so closely. And it's also why I sent Noah looking for her this morning because she didn't come in just gonna make sure she stays in here yeah, let her stay in here um, so I haven't even finished cleaning up from the milking Funny. and um, Noah's come screaming back with a very very big sense of urgency in his voice um, 
And as you can imagine, that'd be quite traumatic for him to see. So he's gone out to pick up what we can find of the calf so we can assess what's going on. Watch the space. Come back. Look, look Come back. He, he just breaks. We need to zap him. Yes, we do. Mm. It's because Valley ca carved and he can yeah, smell the hormones. Yep. We need, I need you now to make sure Clementine is in this fence and shut the gates to that area. Lock her in with Valley. Don't want you to get into Clementine. No, we can't have him get into anyone. Yeah, no one. You're a can naughty we, boy, can Harvey. Can you fill in with Valley? Yeah. No. Maybe we should lock that. Sorry, touch this. Do it. No, because... no, don't. Just don't. Just okay. Yeah, just okay. Zap him. Touch the fence, buddy. Yeah, pass it up. Zap, zap, zap him, zap him. Yeah, just pass it up. Come, pass it. Pass it, Let's go check on mum. Let's go check on mum. Look. No. Look. 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 Between escapes from Harvey and all the other dramas happening on the farm that day, we managed to get hold of a dairyman from down south that we got the calves from. And he had two little heifer calves that were available for sale. Uh, this is the youngest one that was available. And her name Good at the dairy Bessie. was Tessa. We, as you know, have a dog called Tessa. So we've renamed her Bessie. So Bessie is less than a week old and we're hoping to graft her onto Valley so that Valley's broken heart can start to heal. And we are super grateful to Les and Megs from Hunt and Gather Farmstead. 
when I told them what was going on, they jumped to action and said, what do you need us to do? And were kind enough to take the little road trip down to Crooked Brook to pick up little Bessie and bring her back to a heartbroken Valentine. So huge thank you to those guys. We, we appreciate you so much and we're so grateful that uh, you were able to do that for us. Uh, it was a very, very late night. I don't think they got home till 1.30 in the morning. I know I didn't get to sleep till about then after, um, you know, they came and, and dropped her off oh, because time was really of the innocent. essence. So Good girl, Bessie. We're going to keep you guys Where posted you and let you know what is happening with little Bessie. She's a very sweet little thing, very gentle and quiet and not a pushy little calf at all. So we hope that they have a nice transition. Good girl, Bessie. And I thought I would just add this in while editing this because I didn't get any footage oh, and I didn't ask right. them to get any footage of her being picked up just at the dairy it. or anything yeah. like that. Uh, and it was all kind of rush, rush. So um, Noah, Grace and I were dealing with Harvey repeatedly getting out and damaging everything and Bessie. trying with all of his might to get to Valentine. And we were trying with all of our might to make sure that that didn't happen. Uh, meanwhile, behind the scenes, Les and Megs were doing a big trip down there with their children uh, to pick up little Bessie. I just kept bringing this side for safety. Okay, so Harvey has been getting out all day doing my head in. He has damaged trees, he has just messed with my life all day today. We are trying to mother up Valley and the new baby whose name is Bessie. So Bessie and Valley, we're trying to mother up and so far it's looking really good. Um, she's doing great. So I'm going to show you what I've spent the day doing. I didn't take the GoPro because it was just all hands on deck. Um, but here we are. Big, big bunta electric fence. And if we get close, you'll be able to hear it ticking. This is the biggest legal electric fence you can use. So it goes all the way around. And I'm pretty sure, so the fence here, the gate is where he was getting over. So Grace and I walked the whole entire line and we put, we cut all the tree limbs off the fence. We've done it properly. It's a really, really good job. Now the baby boys are not really testing the fence, but this here, that's so that we can open the gate and we can come and go without an issue. But um, I'm pretty sure he knows exactly what it's all about because he hasn't even tested it. And normally we walk away from this, this fence and he's all over it. So we're going to sit here, have a quiet bevy and just finally relax after such a massive weekend. Uh, then we'll take you to see Bessie and Clem, uh, sorry, Bessie and Valley and see how they are settling in. Uh, Brock's telling me that when he went to move Harvey away from Valley the last time, that Bessie was actually feeding off Valley. Now we've spent all day, we've spent all day just putting them together, making sure Valley doesn't kick. And honestly, Valley's doing really well. She's such, she's a lovely girl. Uh, what's this, what's this you got here, Brock? Ah, uh, chest of crayfish. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, these boys went to Durian for the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this morning. And they got back around uh, 12, 12, 12.30. Yeah. Here we go, turn you around. We got about Oi, grab them all, try and grab them all, Brock, and get a, I'll get your photo. Hey, Ready? Alejandro. Ready? You're sexy Mexican. Ready? All right. Step. Okay, just wait. We'll pull, come back a bit. Yeah, hey, look nice craze. Hang up in front of you. The flies. Smile. Give it a yee -hoo. All right, beautiful. Oh, there's five little. All right. So that just crossed over into Brock's channel, but I'll leave it in. Um, yeah, so that's what we spent the day doing. 
mothering up the baby, feeding all the goats, um, all the other domestic things like washing and food and clean up and oh my god I'm surrounded by yeah, bottles just so many bottles baby bottles okay. galore so yeah, yeah that's where we're at um the pigs are still in there's no way they're getting out they have been zapped a few times I've even heard the odd squeal through the day where they must have forgotten or whatever but yeah they're slowly getting used and to it I'm going to take you guys to see Valley and uh, little up. Bessie later yeah. I'm going to watch them for a bit around. and yeah, hopefully side. see them feed Sally's doing beautifully when it comes to looking after the baby, but she still is very unwell. We've seen a vet, we've got her on medication, and we're just helping her the best we can. So sometimes that means that I feed Bessie a bottle just to take the pressure off Valley having to do it and hopefully allowing her some space to heal. morning and before I close out this video I wanted to give you guys an update on Valley and little Bessie but I've just dropped the kids at school and our morning routine is when I walk back up to the house um, from dropping them off I always have an entourage it's pretty cool um, they run from wherever they are to come and see me and um, follow me up the fence line uh, so things have gone up and down up and down um, since Valley carved and lost her baby uh, we have got all those medications into her and tomorrow morning is going to be 72 hours when I need to give her her next dose of antibiotics but I thought I would give you an update on exactly what's been going on because it's been so um, sort of turbulent and, and quite upsetting I haven't really thought to put my camera on so uh, the first day she was just down and miserable and um, very flat and I actually thought well I'm gonna come out in the morning and she's not going to be alive uh, so I was pleasantly surprised when I came out in the morning and not only was she alive, but she had been feeding the baby. The baby was looking very, very healthy and happy and was thriving. So um, then that day I helped her with the baby. We fed her a bit too um, because I didn't want that extra pressure on her while she was trying to heal. Like I remember being a breastfeeding mum and just trying to do that and, and heal from anything is just near on impossible. So I thought while keeping the bond, so I would go out to her, feed the baby right next to her. So she still heard the baby sucking. She she still had the baby right near her and, and they could bond. Um, so that's great and that was all working. We're making sure the baby's healthy and getting plenty of food. And then last night, same thing. She was still really flat. It was a really quite hot day yesterday and the flies were bothering her and she, yeah, as you saw in the video just before, um, we fed the baby up and then later that night at about 10ish, we gave the baby a massive feed as well, filled her tummy up. Then this morning, uh, we went out to feed them and couldn't find them anywhere. So I was like, okay, let's go out and find them. Left the gate open yesterday so she could have visitors and that seemed to really perk up her mood. She seemed to really improve and feel a lot better. She was actively trying to keep up with them. So they, you know, slowed their pace to keep her with them in their herd, which was lovely. And I think it really um, improved her mental well-being. Um, and this morning is a lovely, cool morning. It's just, it's not even cold or anything. So I don't have to worry but, about the baby, but it's lovely and cool. There's very few flies around, as you can see. Normally I sit out here on a warm day and you just can't. There's flies everywhere. It's bad. Um, but not this morning. It's not too bad. They're, they're very mild. So we made up a full bottle for the bubba and we went out into the paddock to feed her um, where we found Bally. Bally was in the dam having a soak and a bit of a play and, and a lot to drink. So that was so great. Um, 
and she obviously needed a shower after her medical you know intervention and all that and having a baby and I totally get her that's the one thing I wanted after I had a baby so yeah she went and had a, a um, bit of me time in the dam which is so great um, Brock went out and fed the baby and she really only wanted that much from the bottle uh, and he said yeah mum she's full she's been feeding off someone and I said oh I was worried that maybe it was Bonnie so I was like oh who was she hanging around and he goes oh she was right next to Valley Valley and her are like shadowing each other going everywhere so at the moment all in all it is going really well um, please guys if you if you pray pray for them if you you know whatever you believe in whatever your way of asking for for help and things like that is do that please I'm I beg of you because we've been doing that um, it has been a very long week it's Thursday today and yeah I I know that I look pretty haggard right now but um, I love my animals and I stress about them when they're not feeling well uh, and I honestly told Alex last night I was like I think Valley's gonna pass away so to find her this morning actually perking up and starting to get better has really just made my morning so I'm gonna go find her um, at some point this afternoon I'm gonna have to bring her in because I've got work tomorrow and um, I'll need to give her her next lot of antibiotics because it'll be 72 hours um, and we don't want to miss that because if she's starting to feel better and whatever it is that she's got going on is it's going to perk her up then I'm all for that um, so we hope you enjoyed this video I know it was a bit of a turbulent one and I know some of you are going to be very sad about it because I know that's how I felt pretty much all week um, but that is the truth of farming and I don't want to leave any of that stuff out because it wouldn't be telling the full story. Some, some times are just hard and other times just fill you with joy. And that's the reality of it. I mean, honestly, that's the reality of life, right? Um, so, yeah, I just want full transparency and the, and the whole story told. Um, you know, comment below if you if you have anything you wanted to add or any tips or advice for me. I'm open to that, absolutely. Um, and I did want to say, during this process, um, when we really struggled, like we we did, weren't able to get a vet out, they were just too busy. Um, there's a parvo outbreak in Northam and in Beverly, so they have been flat out um, vaccinating dogs and that, so they have really been busy. So I'm not... You know, I'm not blaming them and I am thankful to them that they they gave me the medication I needed to help Valley because that was the difference between her being alive now and, and, and not. So that's great. But also massive, massive um, gratitude for these lovely people that live just down the road here and we managed to um, sort of connect uh, when the cows went missing and I put a post on asking everyone to keep their eyes out. Uh, they connected because they have cattle as well. This lovely couple, I'm not going to name them just because I haven't asked their permission, but they know who they are, uh, came over and were so generous with their time and their years of experience with cattle and just gave me more and more insight, helped me to mother them up and, and get that connection going between Bessie and Valley. Um, they also bought me a pack of brand new fresh this season's hay because they could see that I was totally in what I was doing and, you know, just trying to think of this extra thing, you know, would have been a massive headache and they just thought ahead for me and I am so grateful to Please them. give it a big thumbs up. It helps us out. Share it with your friends. Um, comment below. I love the comments and I always answer them. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel so that you can see more of this sort of content if it if it interests you and hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe one and every time we'll re release a video it'll let you know that we've released a new one um, you'll get a notification i hope you guys have a fantastic day take care of each other and until the next video bye for now